This is the third and final video in a series of three on drawing a bicycle chain. Hi, welcome to Corel Draw Techniques. My name is John Allred. In parts one and two, we created a bicycle chain and we put the parts together. Today, we'll use Corel Draw and Corel Photo Paint to create an animated GIF that will simulate motion. In the first two videos, I emphasized using the keyboard shortcuts for Corel Draw and there's a few basic ones listed in the comments below. I trust you to have done your homework and to be familiar with the tools and know how to use them. All right, so the way we're going to do this is we're going to create four different pages and these will simulate motion by changing the position of the links just slightly between each page. The first page is exactly like it needs to be. So we'll start with the second page. Duplicate, copy layers and contents, and save. I'm going to group the upper and lower spans of links. Uh, this will make them easier to move and also prevent them from being selected when I'm selecting the links that go around the sprockets. Uh, for each section, there's going to be four sections of chain, and for each section I'm going to have the leading edge be one of the top plates, like this one, and the trailing edge will be the inner plate, like this one. So let me get started with that. Group. Now which ones I'm using is a little bit arbitrary. This is where I think it'll work best. You may have uh, different ideas of how it ought to work. I think I'll use that one. Control group. I've previously placed guides here to help me uh, in positioning these these spans of chain. And they're not I don't need to snap to them. They don't need to be exactly precise, but they'll keep me keep me lined up. All right, so let's zoom in. And I'm going to select this first span. And I want to move each one half the distance of the plate. So the position for this point right here is going to be right here, halfway along the next plate. Okay. And I neglected to point out previously, you can use the H key to give you a hand. It's actually called the pan tool but it makes it quick to get from one side of a drawing to another. All right, you notice that my trailing edge here is now disconnected from the previous chain link. I'm going to select my sprocket and the links attached to it. I'll make sure that my center of rotation is in the right position. And let's see, I need my windows, dockers, transformations, and I want to rotate Docker. All right, I'm going to rotate this clockwise. So use the minus key, 360 degrees divided by, and I have nine links on this sprocket. So I want to make these go half the distance that they would. So I'll double that number to 18 and that'll move. Well, watch. It'll move my sprocket the distance that I need. This is it has the center of rotation correct. Rotate this up. We're good. I can select the lower portion of the chain, move that over. I feel like I'm getting cross-eyed here. It moves that. And I need to rotate this chain link up, so press the control key, let go of the control key, and click one more time. And my center of rotation is on the wrong end, so let me move it. Good enough. Okay. Just a touch more. Okay, I got that end, H. 
I can drag over this entire assembly and I won't select any of the other links up here because I have them grouped. I'm going to rotate again. Minus for clockwise. 360 divided by, and there's 22 chain links, so I'm going to divide that by 44 to move it half the distance of one link. Oops, before I do that, I need to make sure my center of rotation is correct. Yep, it is. And I'm ready to move it. There we go. I've got two chain links to move now. Center rotation needs to be there. Downward. And this one needs to be upward. Center of rotation is correct. Move it down. Shift F4. We'll see the first, first motion here. Page one, page two. You see the beginnings of the drawing taking shape. All right, save. We'll copy the second page. Save. Once again, we'll zoom in and do just like we did before. Center rotation seems a little off. Minus 360 divided by 2 times 9 or 18. Apply. There we go. I've got two links to change. There we are. Nope, I only have one right now. This one I'll move half the distance and press control, let go, click again, and I'm ready to rotate. Okay, H. Center rotation is good. Minus 360 divided by 44. Apply. Top is good, and I only need to change the bottom one. Control. Oops. Shift F4. Let's go back to the first. There's one, two, three, and we're ready to make our final version. Right click, duplicate. Okay. Save. And let's zoom in. Move that half the distance. H. Center rotation is pretty close. This is changing uh, just slightly because these links are slightly outside of the whole center of the sprocket. So that's why I'm having to, to change that. Selected minus 360 divided by 2 times 9 is 18. Apply. Now 
All right, center rotation is pretty good. Move that up straight on. Just like this one, move it up. Center rotation is good. There we go, got it completed. I'm ready to move this one halfway. Move the center of rotation to that end. Move this up. Now I can rotate that over and I'm good. And now I have the final group to move. Center of rotation is good. Minus 360 divided by 44. Apply. All right, I said I'd have to change this one before, so I'm going to rotate that down just a little bit. Oops. There we are. Okay, this one needs to be rotated downward. This one needs to move down to there. Rotate that around. Save. Shift F4. Now let's go back and check our work. There is the first state, second, third, fourth. Now, when we put these into continuous motion, it's going to appear like the, the chain is rotating around the sprockets nonstop. Are you ready to take our drawing into Corel Photo Paint to create our animated GIF? Well, let's do that. But first, let me point out that this is a process that I have figured out how to use. I'm not going to tell you that it's the best way to do it. Uh, there may be others. But the documentation online, including what Corel itself provides, is pretty spotty and it's, it's a little difficult to understand. So this process will work. Uh, there may be better processes and if someone else can show us how to do it, that would be great. So let's get started. I'm going to go to Photo Paint. I'm going to create a new document. Now, let me point out here, I have done this before, so it's working okay for me, but you may discover when you open uh, a file in PhotoPaint that the number of frames is grayed out so that you can't set it. You're probably on 24-bit uh, color mode to start with. If you change the color mode, you should be able then to select the number of frames. If you can't, I have no answer for you because I, I haven't found any documentation. I only got this solution by accident. Okay, at any rate, we're going to start with actually four frames, so enter that amount in. Uh, I'm going with an 11 by 8.5 uh, landscape page. So click OK. And first thing you'll notice is that I've got four frames up here, and this is a movie docker. If you don't see this, you should, but if you don't, then go to Window, Dockers, and click on Movie, which I've got selected right now. Now, the thing to know about this is that we're going to bring each, uh, each page of the Corel Draw document over, and we're going to paste that page into the corresponding frame here in PhotoPaint. So I've got the first frame highlighted. You see the little red outline around it? That tells me it's highlighted. So I'm going to go back to Corel Draw. And I'm going to make sure that I've got page one selected. That's behind my little inset here. But select page one. Copy. Go back to Photo Paint. And we're going to paste.
and 34. Okay. Okay, that's the first uh, page pasted in. And for each of the frames, what we have to do is go to Object, Combine, and Combine Objects with Background. <clears throat> and when you do that, you'll notice that you see the little... Uh, let me make this larger. You'll see the, the illustration actually appear on that frame. Okay, save. Back to Corel Draw. Click on page two. Highlight. Copy. All right, go to Photo Paint. And now you would think that you would select your next frame by clicking on it, but you don't. You see that red outline around there? You need to hit the Next Frame button. That will give you the second frame selected. Paste. Oops. Paste. And once again, go up to Object, Combine. Let's go back to Corel Draw. Go to page three, highlight, copy, photo paint. I want to go to frame three, paste, and object combine. You see, there's a shortcut there I'm not using. All right, <clears throat> back to Corel Draw. Go to page four. Highlight, copy, and let's go to the last frame, paste, and then object, combine all objects with background. Okay, now at this stage I can click the play button and we'll see it animate. That's going pretty slow. So I'm going to make this half of that, make it 100 milliseconds. All right, let's play that. Okay, that's a little faster. And if you'd like to make it even faster, let's go to 50. Okay, and play. All right, that's looking like a bicycle chain. Let's stop, <clears throat> and now we'll save our file. And Photo Paint will give us the option to uh, either save as a AVI or as a bitmap, uh, as a GIF. Uh, choose whichever suits your purposes. I'll go with GIF. And I want to make this uh, animated chain. Hit enter for save. And I'll get my options here. This is where you can select if you want it to run only a certain number of times. Then you select the number of repetitions here. Uh, if you select forever, then it'll play continuously. And you can do a quick preview. Play. There we go. All right. So let's click OK. And that will save our file. Now, I'm going to tell you this. Uh, I could pull the file up and play it. And it'll only loop through one time in the uh, Windows File Player. In order for it to be viewed properly, you're going to have to open the file in a browser. Open with. I use Google Chrome, so I'm going to select that. Select whichever browser makes sense for you. And I'll open that in Chrome. And it's working like we saved it. Okay. Uh, we've gone all the way through in the first two videos. We created the parts for a bicycle chain and put them together. And in this third video, we, uh, we put them into motion using Corel Draw and Photo Paint. If you got value out of this video, I hope you'll take the time to smash the like button. 
And it would also be great if you would hit the subscribe button and tap the bell to be notified of any future videos. In uh, the next several videos I'm going to make will be a lot shorter than these first three. I started on this project just because it seemed like a good idea. But I know they're a little on the log side and the next, next few videos will be uh, shorter how-tos. So I hope you'll come back and join me. Thanks a bunch.